Welcome back. I already took a look at the features of the monthly planner with notebook. Anybody who knows this brand probably is also aware of bullet journals. I've toyed with the idea. But what I found was I wanted more structure. And that's what the monthly planner with notebook does. It gives you the notebook, but then it does all the planner section for you, which is fantastic. Forget the fact that everybody carries a cell phone that holds this, but now you're spending time recreating it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't want to spend the time writing out months and calendars and days. Think about how long it would take you to write even just 2021 or whatever your current year is and the next year. They print this stuff out. It's done. Great. Move on. That's why I like this product. I've been using this layout for two years now. And then you have your daily vertical year overview page. They give you the international holidays. Think about the time you would spend researching and writing down multiple holidays for multiple countries. This is a time savings right here. I'm not gonna go and recreate this every single year in a bullet journal, that's for sure. Now, project plan. The first thought, of course, is, hey, I'll put projects in here. And frankly, I tried doing some of that in 2020 and whew, 2020, huh, the gifts that kept on giving. I did consider though, using this for habit tracking. This is the general format with the month and then code for the habit that I'm tracking. And I'll put a key on this at some point. It gives me exactly 31 columns. This B5 size fits on one page, easily three habits for every month for a full year. I like that. However, after I had started writing in this, I realized I was basically recreating what's here. And you could even track up to five habits, or maybe six if you use below the line. Or you could just do two or three habits and then also fit in projects. There's no reason you couldn't put both here. Every single day is here for the full year on this bread. This is another way that instead of spending all that time drawing and designing your own personal habit tracker, scratch out project and say habits. That's another way that the monthly planner is designed well to be flexible for what you need and save you time in drawing out a bullet journal. Now the monthly spreads, these are a nice size. Just for context, open up my 2020 notebook. You can see the contrast between the B5 and the B6 Plus, which is the other smaller size for the monthly notebook. See that size difference? That translates into a lot more writing space. This fit in the back pocket of all my jeans, but particularly in 2020, not going nearly as many places. What I found in the old size, it was just such a small space. You're not capturing a full schedule in a planner like that. They do have these little boxes here where you can capture the page number. That would be, especially if you're using the smaller size, you, you would almost certainly have to use that if you're using this for any sort of planning beyond just normal, hey, I got a birthday party or, or something like that. With this, you can actually fit in a time, the title of what you're doing. For example, here's one day where I got to clean crayon out of a dryer. There's this concept of a future log. The future! I'm not gonna go and write out events a year in advance. Uh, typically, if I'm doing that, maybe I make a note of it, or rather, I'm using the calendar. The calendar? How I deal with tasks. This is one of the great, great features. They put the week of the year. If I have a personal task, something like renew a website or register a car or renew a license, I can put those in. Sometimes those have a specific deadline. A lot of that stuff, you don't really want to wait till that date. I'll use these week numbering and put in tasks. Like with bullet journal, it puts a dot and then here's the thing to do. And then you can exit off as you come through. Now, if I get really specific, I might come over and say, okay, this task, I'm gonna do it on this day, and I might even write it in. This allows me to kind of have a future log, but have it sitting right in front of my face. I tried a couple of years ago putting a task list inside one of these pages. What I found was it was too disconnected from my calendar. So the whole point of this is keeping the calendar right up front and then having the daily review sections right after the calendar. That's how I keep the whole thing in order and I keep the things that I'm gonna look at frequently closer together. That helps me to use this a little bit for planning and a lot for journaling and idea capture. To me, bullet journaling is about speed and flexibility. You find the next blank page, you write your note, then you go to the index, you say page number, whatever it is. However, this is not a notebook for planning my whole schedule. I have a work calendar for that. I have people that send me meeting invites. I don't transfer it to paper. Paper is not as efficient. It can't be shared and changed as rapidly. This is more slow thinking. An idea that I have that I want to explore later. I have certain things that I want to focus on every year. It's a consistent layout that provide both the structure that guides me through what I need to track, but also leave me with flexibility. Once I've done it for a few years, it takes a very quick review to figure out how many pages I'm using per entry and approximately how many pages 
I will need in the new book. It's not perfect, but let's say I did really well and I worked out way more than I thought I would, or maybe I started tracking my workouts in more detail. You can just add in the other page references. So yes, you may have some topics that get stretched out to a couple of different pages, but what I found is even after only a year, you can get really good at estimating how many pages you're gonna need. If you end up with a couple of blank pages, it's not a big deal. That's how I get by with a very standard setup. I tried to put in some of the stencils to make a visual link so that as I'm flipping through the notebook, uh, maybe I can find those pages faster. What I've noticed is starting out with a set section of topics and lists, I start to intuitively remember where things are. Now, as I said a moment ago, I have over a couple of years devised, here's the type of things I want, and there's certain sections near the top, things that I want to review on a daily basis. And it's gonna be the first few pages right after the index. And then from there, I end up with a lot of lists. On my reference page, I'll put things like work numbers, contact number from a credit card company's addresses, basically anything that if I lost my phone or my wallet, I'm gonna wanna be able to look up. A reference page is a great place to put your key. And even Bullet Journal does this. Here's what certain symbols mean. And I do put a little stencil on the bottom so I can flip to the page faster without even looking at the index. It's not art for art's sake. A list of things to buy, things to read, capturing names, titles, specific music. I have a number of journal pages, which are exactly what they sound like, date and an entry. All right, here's my month review page. In the past, all I've done is said, here's my month. And again, this is a place for great foreign language practice, put the months in the foreign language. Part of this is the habit tracker. Part of this is some other stuff. I want to grade myself. That is the full system at this point. That gets me with quite a lot of detail being captured to page 48. This notebook goes all the way page 138. So I still have 90 pages unused. Plenty of space back here. If I wanna do some doodling, if I wanna brainstorm something else or just a random page of notes, I can just do that. These are the only pages, there's eight of them that tear out. They are perforated as you can see. Sometimes I don't even use them during the year. I don't have a lot of use cases for tearing paper out of a notebook and handing it to someone. That helps me to use this a little bit for planning and a lot for journaling and idea capture. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look. It's given you some ideas on what you can do. I do recommend this line of notebooks. No, they have not given me anything. I've paid for all this with my own money. I've been using this brand for several years now. I like the notebooks. I like the paper. 